I think it was on Boxing Day or the day, no, the day after Boxing Day. And I started mine about two weeks ago. I'd, I'd got the yarn and everything, you know, and um, I'm so pleased with it. I'm just going to show you. It's like, uh, uh, and I know. You, when do you knit then, Stuart? When do oh, you in my hotel room yeah. and things like that. It's a Look big. It. I love that. It's nice, isn't it? Again, from Stylecraft. It's all about Stylecraft. I just love their yarns. That's Highland Heather. But today we're looking at Bellissima and Bambino because it's all about oh, gorgeous children. These are so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And I must say, it's one of the most special gifts to gift somebody. Or I, I made Maisie a blanket, just a simple knit one. But you've told me that these are really simple and I'll be able to do these as well. Didn't Absolutely. I mean, the slip stitch blanket is simple. It is beautiful. And the lovely thing about it is you might make like an item of clothing for a new baby, but they'll wear they that grow once out of every it. now and then and they'll grow out of it. They'll wear, they'll use that every day yeah. and, um, you know, they'll love it and they'll keep it forever, won't they? It's How a really great is price that? point isn't it to say that you get all of this beautiful yarn as well so starting with the pink we do have a couple of different colorway options but you get 300 um, grams of your premium acrylic yarn and it is so soft it's really lovely oh it's amazing this is the um bambino yarn now it's a 100 percent premium acrylic yarn from stylecraft and stylecraft are the Britain's number one favourite premium acrylic brand. Ah, okay. Yeah, we absolutely love Stylecraft. But Bambino is particularly soft, mm -hmm. buttery, smooth. Mm. It comes in these gorgeous, muted, slightly matte shades. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely beautiful. They have a high twist. They have almost like a merino-like feel to them mm -hmm. and look to them. So that's going to give you brilliant stitch definition. So whether you're using this for knit and purl, slip stitch, um, cables, anything like that, you're going to get brilliant stitch definition. We are also including the pattern in at that price at £15.50. Um, um, it's not just the pattern for the blanket. That, well, there are four different designs, um, but this one, uh, you get the solid colour. That's right. So that version of the blanket is knitted still with that slip stitch, but it's a solid colour. Yeah. Um, and also that yarn is machine washable too. Oh, lovely. And you can, tum and you can tumble dry it. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so machine essential. wash at 30 degrees, tumble dry low. Um, we also have the grey and cream version so this is exactly the same technique it's the same <clears throat> pattern yeah. but look at how different it looks when you've got the two different colours yep and literally all you're doing there is knitting stripes but I'll show you the slip stitch technique that's used it's ever so easy really and it easy looks really enough. complex no I know it does doesn't it it, it looks, looks really, yeah. really it, it, it is clever but it's easy oh brilliant we're going <laughs> to see how we do this so you get your pattern you get your four um, yard balls, 100 grams of each, well, sorry, 200 grams of each colour, enough to be able to make the blanket, Stuart? Yeah, so the um, striped, the grey and white striped or the pink blankets, that slip stitch blanket, is 26 inches wide, 31 and a half inches long, and in new money, that's 66 centimetres by 80 centimetres. Right, brilliant. Um, I suppose you, yeah, the... Um, you get three balls in the pink, but because of the design, you get the extra ball of yarn. Exactly right. Colours. Exactly right. And it's just a really simple garter stitch border all the way around the outside edge. That's lovely, isn't it? Seventeen ninety nine for the grey and white. And again, if you're not quite sure of the sex of the baby, maybe go with this one if you're knitting for something. Grey is the colour, silver grey. You know, a lot of houses now, it's it's the neutral of choice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Grey, silver, but also it's perfect for a gender neutral that's gift. lovely. In the uh, the quilts that we had on Sewing Street earlier, the greys were the most popular, actually, super popular. Seventeen ninety nine. If you've already paid your PMP on Sewing Street, don't forget you will only pay one PMP across <laughs> the whole day, even here on Yarn Lane. Everything is on the website, um, whether you're purchasing or just on the web on Sewing Street or just on the web on Yarn Lane. Don't need to put any sort of code at checkout. It's just solely um, just one PMP across the day. Uh, now. We also have the purple. Now this one is a different pattern, but it still comes 
in this one, am I it right? It does indeed, yes. Yeah. So there are two more blankets on this oh, same this pattern. Lovely. This is the zigzag. So there are two versions of the zigzag blanket. This <gasps> is the lilac and white. Isn't that gorgeous? It's got a zigzag oh, through it. <laughs> but also, can I show you? It's got a zigzag edge to it. Yeah. <gasps> now That's so clever, Stuart. You think that looks really hard, yeah? How would yeah. you ever do that? It's so easy. Are you kidding? It's so easy to knit. It really is. I'll show you how to do that as well. And that one is literally two rows lilac, two rows white. And you just repeat that start to finish. <gasps> So clever, isn't it? So there's it? only two rows to the pattern. Uh, so you've got two balls of the lilac, two balls of the white. You get your pattern as well. And this, is, again, is that lovely Bambino. It's another soft lilac, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it's a gorgeous soft lilac there. The, the, I mean, the Bambino yarns are absolutely loved by knitters. You, you can get the Bellissima, the other yarn, actually. Um, a lot of people use that for knitting up adult garments, too. You can use Bambino for adult garments, of oh. course. But it's particularly great for babies because yeah. it's so super soft absolutely being 100 percent acrylic as well means it's machine washable tumble dryable and also you're not going to have to worry about it sort of scratching mm -hmm. delicate skin mm -hmm. as some wools can or right. causing allergic reactions yeah. either yeah. and of course as well you know um it's it's a vegan option too yeah. So if you don't use yeah. wool, then this is absolutely perfect. That colour is beautiful. They've called it Heather, that yeah. beautiful purple. $17.99 and you do get your pattern as well. I mean, we're talking about babies today, but I've just had this on my knees and it's so lovely and soft, you know, for anybody who just wants a bit of warmth, watching the telly. Oh, for sure. While they're doing their other knitting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's a good size. The zigzag blanket's 23 and a half inches by 31 and a half inches. That's um, 60 centimetres by 80 centimetres. So again, a really good size. That one doesn't have an added border to it either. No. That's just knitted in one piece. Right. So when you cast off that last row, you are done. Gosh, that's brilliant, isn't it? I love it. Really love this one. £17.99. Loads of you checking out on that. You do get all four balls of yarn, your, your pattern and um, all that included for £17.99. We're going to talk about some of the techniques for the blanket before we move on. Don't forget, we've also got on pre-order the little coats, the little jackets. We've got the, uh, the beautiful cardigans, different sizes available as well, different colour options. So we are going to come to that. It's on pre-order if you want to get ahead. Stuart, though, we're going to talk about some of the techniques for the blanket. We certainly are. We certainly are. So let me show you the slip stitch technique first of all. Now, this is the um pattern that's used for the pink blanket the plain pink blanket yeah but it's also used for the gray and white stripe blanket Bam. and as i'm knitting this i'll explain um how you do the gray and white <coughs> so i'm just knitting using pink um now you're going to start by casting on and for the first um lot of rows you're just going to do garter stitch if i can just show you that at the bottom of this little bit of knitting here i've just done four rows of garter stitch there yeah so this is just uh, garter stitch mm -hmm. um, where you're literally knitting every row right okay Makes yeah, sense I can do to that. you yeah, yeah you're a beginner knitter right yeah so just cast on knit Row, one row, knit the second row, back and forth the same. So you keep doing that. And you do that with three and a quarter mil needles. So the start of that blanket, you will need three three point two five millimeter needles. Do you like knitting on these um, circular needles? Circulars. I knit on circulars almost all the time. I really, I because I do a lot of sock knitting, I'm used to knitting with short needles. So the fact that it's on a cable just gives me a nice short needle. I love using the Zing needles. I'm mostly using Zing. They're ace. There's your zing needles, 39.99. And this deluxe set, you get loads. You get all the different sizes. So lots of different patterns call different sizes, don't they? So do you say these are three and a half? So you want 3.25s and 4 mil okay. um, needles for this particular blanket. Okay, so when we start to work the pattern, okay, um, this is what we're going to do. So it's super easy. You're going to... Oh, wait a minute. Let me move Thank over. Thank you. Right then, <laughs> back in the game. All right. So we're going to knit three stitches. 
So don't be slipping the first stitch or anything like that. Knit all first three stitches. And then keeping your yarn at the back of your work, all right, you're going to slip the next stitch. And you want to slip purl-wise. So put it in as if you're going to purl. So from the back to the front. And slip that stitch off. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then continue. Knit three stitches. Two, three. And then slip the next stitch. Okay, so that's row one of the pattern. Oh, okay. Are you with me so far? I am. Ace. So I've just slipped that stitch because that was the fourth stitch. One, two, three, and slip. And you do that to the last three stitches and then we're just knitting three. Okay, so that's row, whoops, that is row one. And slipping that stitch, can you see this long sort of elongated stitch right. that's sitting on top of stocking stitch? That is how that's created. Oh, By literally not knitting one. it, just slipping it. Right. Don't drop it. No. But just slip it from the left needle onto the right. Okay. That's all you have to do. Right, so now I'm going to turn my work. So if you're using... Um, uh, circular needles and you've never used them before you're not pushing the stitches round to the other end you just literally turn your work as you would ordinarily okay so your second row you're going to purl are you able to purl can you um, purl go on show me how I purl oh well let hang on there for a second <laughs> no you keep going <laughs> I don't need my tutorial now <laughs> no I'll do it I'll do it I'll do a um a purl in a second all right and then the fourth stitch you're going to slip and you keep your yarn at the front ready to purl the next stitch okay so one is this looking familiar yeah two three with your yarn at the front and then slip one one two three and slip one one two three and slip one and then one two three right so that's your first two rows happy so far yeah ace so row number three you already know how to do because it's exactly the same as row one so we're just knitting three and slipping one you're keeping your yarn at the back here which is nice and easy to remember because when you're knitting, your working yarn is at the back. And when you're purling, your working yarn is at the front. front yeah. And you just keep it where it's supposed to be. You don't start sort of yanking the yarn forward or back. You just leave it where it's supposed to be. So we've done our third row, which is exactly the same as our first row. And when you're slipping those stitches, you know, you can give the yarn just a little tug, just to give it a little stretch a little bit. So it sits nice and flat. And then your fourth row, you're just going to purl. Okay? Right, I'm so no purl. slipping. So forward. Yeah. Forward. Yeah. Now, when you get to the stitch where you've slipped a stitch, can I just show you here? The two stitches, the sl there's the slipped stitch and then the stitch next to it. They will sit very close together on the needle. I don't know if it was easier to see overhead, actually, but those two stitches sit very close together. They almost look like one they fat do. stitch. So when you're purling, beginners, when you're purling this stitch, just be careful that you remember that's two separate stitches and don't go purling the two of them together. So there's no slipping this row, it's no, all purling. The fourth row, see there we are again, just make sure oh, yeah. you separate those stitches out and purl right across and that's row four now if you were to do the white and silver blanket what you would do after four rows like this and we've done four rows is you'd pick up the silver gray if you started with white you know you'd pick up the silver gray and you would do four rows in the silver Mm -hmm. And then four rows in the white, four rows in the silver. And don't go breaking the yarn off. Just carry the yarn that you're not using up the side of your knitting. Okay. Just kind of twist the two together as you go. Um, if you're just working the plain blanket... Would you, would you recommend going for the plain if you are... No. 
No, go with the colour that you love. Okay. There's nothing difficult. You're literally just letting go of one yarn and knitting four rows in grey. Letting go of the grey yarn, knitting four yeah. rows in the white. Okay. There's no different. Working mm. stripes is the easiest sort of clever thing you'll yeah. ever do. Yeah. Um, apart from this slip stitch, which is so easy. Now, if you're just doing the plain um, slip stitch blanket, you don't have to do anything else. You're just going to work those four rows again and again, over and over and over. I mean, there are rows four, five, six, and seven, but they're they're exactly the same. Okay, they, brilliant. You just use them in a different colour if you're doing a stripe. So that's the pink slip stitch blanket. And just repeated and repeated. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. And how cool does that look? It looks. Like you've done something really clever. It does. And all you've done is slip one needle from one needle to the other. And, and then you say it's a stocking stitch around the edge. No, so around the edge it's a garter, garter stitch. Garter stitch. So, um, so for absolute beginners, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So for garter stitch, all you're going to do is you're going to knit every stitch. So we'll do our first row. So you'll actually use a slightly... Um, thinner needle. So look just into the stitch from the front to the back, mm -hmm. yarn around from back to front and then slip it off. So I'm just knitting whoops, straight across. It's curling up. There we go. Remember your grey and white is the same technique. Same technique. Just which colour you prefer. All you're doing is four rows white, four rows silver and just repeating that. So when you get to the end of your row, you've done every single stitch knitting. Okay. Now, when you come back, if you're doing stocking stitch, that would be a purl row. But if you're doing garter stitch, which is often the one that we learn because it's only one stitch, you're just knitting that row as well. Right. You knit forward and back. You just keep knitting every single row. And what this creates is those lovely ridges mm. that you see around mm -hmm. the outside edge. Now, the very outside edge of that blanket, you're going to um, add a side border and you're actually going to pick up and knit stitches along that edge. Yeah, I love that. Isn't that beautiful? Really beautiful. It is such, I mean, look at the reverse of it as well. I mean, it looks so clean at the back, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It looks more or less like a stocking stitch on the back. Yeah. This one does have a sort of very definite right and wrong side. But yeah, garter stitch, super easy. That slip stitch pattern, super easy. And to do it in stripes, very, very easy too. And I love this shade of pink as it's well. It's a rose, isn't it? It's a really, like you said, matte finish. It's a, a That's blush right. rose colour. It's lovely. You can see that lovely ridge. And when you're count, if you ever need to count your rows of garter stitch, okay. Okay, which if it says things like um, knit eight rows of garter stitch, okay. okay, you could do what I used to do when I was younger, you know, which is a piece of paper and writing them down four and a bar across, keep a count that way. But if you're doing garter stitch, if you count the ridges on um, as you go, each ridge, full ridge across, is two rows. So down here, you can see there are two ridges. That means I knitted four, four rows, exactly right. So I didn't have to write anything down. Every ridge is two rows. Oh, that's a really good handy tip to remember. So that's easy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm so, with you on that one. Yeah, cool. Um, can I just <laughs> show you the pink and the silver? So this is the finished pink. Uh, Especially working on the the, uh, the circular needles as well, because you are obviously going to have a lot more rows than what you're, a lot more to well, cast Well, I on. Re yeah, I really like using circulars because it balances the stitches, it balances the weight. This is the pink. We also then have the white and grey, which is beautiful. Now, you do get one more ball of the yarn in the white and grey. They call it silver and white, which, yeah, it's like a, a silver grey, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really, really beautiful uh, in, the, in, the, in the two colours. And they are exactly the same size. It's just to be able to create the, this pattern with the, with the two different colours, the striped pattern. 
lovely messages coming through. Hi Dawn. Hi both. Just bought the beautiful blanket. Expecting my first granddaughter in March. Oh, oh how congratulations, exciting. Dawn. <gasps> Not long to wait now. Not it's long such to a wait. great motivation, isn't it, to get on with a project? It really is. And yeah. the baby blanket is perfect because it'll fit. Yeah. Do you think it'll we'll get fit. it done by March? Yeah, of course. There you go. Yeah. Go for it, Absolutely. Dawn. Very Absolutely. exciting. Uh, okay, we also have the other blanket, remember. We have the lilac and white, which is, again, same pattern. <coughs> you also get the same, yeah, you get the same set of patterns because there's three different designs in here, isn't there, Stuart? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. So there's the solid colour. There's the, the, the stripe colour and then there's this one, the chevron zigzag design, which is big. Really great value for money, $17.99. And you are going to also get the yarn included as well for that price. Yes, yes. Uh, that one, the blue one on the front, we haven't got that colourway, but that actually uses two shades of blue and a white. So there's a, a fourth option on the pattern that gives you the oh. sort of colour sequence. Oh, fantastic. Whereas the lilac and white, is two rows white, two rows lilac. I needn't have told you that, Vicky, because you can see the ridge. Even though it's a zigzag, you can still see the ridge of stitches, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can. And would you believe, you know that zigzag of lilac that you see going up and down? Yeah. That's knitted as a, a one row. Is it? That's a straight row. How? But because of the way you do the stitches, it contorts itself into a zigzag. Really? I know, I know. Oh, my word. It's the same with the bottom edging. You cast on your stitches, you start the pattern, and then you look down and you've got this zigzag edge. How cool is that? It's really cool. Oh, have a go, have a go. $17.99, that's the lilac and white. Heathers and white is so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Um, Alicia, I'm sorry we don't have the blue version. We don't have the blue version. Uh, is the blue bambino available on its own? I've bought the pink option of the slip stitch blanket. We'd like to do the blue too. Alicia, I'm so sorry. We don't, not today. Although we do have the blue in in other bundles. We do. You and what could. I was going to say, Vix, was you could do the silver and white. Mm -hmm. You could, because you get the pattern for everything, if you got the silver and white, you could do the zigzag blanket in silver and white as well, right. if you wanted. Or you could do the zigzag blanket in plain pink. Yeah. So you can mix and match. We just haven't got that blue option. But if you wanted, um, you know, like that silvery option, yeah. like not lilac, then you could do that. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Um, so that's your, your white and silver option in your graphic. Um, Sylvia, hello Sylvia. What size needles do I need to make the blanket? Sylvia's okay. asked. So the slip stitch blanket, we've got that in the solid pink yeah. or the silver and white. You're going to need three and a quarter mil, 3.25 millimetre needles for the garter stitch border. And then you're going to use a four millimetre needle for the slip stitch blanket because this is a DK, d double knit. Okay. Yarn. Perfect. If you're doing the zigzag blanket, you just need four millimetre. Fab. Thank you ever so much. Maureen, all of the shows load onto YouTube after the show. So don't worry, you can watch it back. Um, we did talk a bit about the garter stitch there. So you can watch it back on YouTube at any point. Uh, right, shall we do some clothes? Yeah. Uh, so... We've got an example of each, but we've got different sizes, you see. We've got different sizes. So I've got here the little cardigan, um, which is with the short sleeves, mm. and then this beautiful jacket with the hood as well. How gorgeous are my both favorite. of these? I know, they're <gasps> lovely. The little, and now I never know, is it a bolero or a bolero? I could say bolero. Bolero. But, but yeah, I also yeah. say potato. It's so. almost like a little ballet cardigan, it isn't is. it? It is. I imagine this more, you know, like a winter wedding over a, a, a real pretty dress. That's so gorgeous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Whereas this is everyday, lovely jacket. That's really nice. Boys or girls. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How and squidgy it's so and soft. soft is that? And you may a good point actually because I had a few um, woolen uh, garments uh, for Maisie and it irritated her skin mm, it really mm, did and yet yeah. this won't because it's again super soft acrylic. It is it's that it's that um, premium acrylic it's machine washable it's at 30 squishy. degrees you can tumble dry it on low lovely um, and it's gonna spring back it's it's anti-pilling so it's going to last well it's so super soft buttery soft 
and those gorgeous, gorgeous sort of slightly matte mm -hmm. vintage colours just bang on trend, aren't they? Oh, they're lovely. Right, we're going to start with the, did you say Bolero then? Hannah says Bolero. Yeah. So your Bolero, Bolero, in the pink. Um, now we've got size variations. So I'll tell you how many balls of yarn you need. Now this pattern covers right from zero to 18 months. You get your pink, which uh, you've got two different designs. So you've got the longer sleeve and the short sleeve. What we've included, mm -hmm. one ball of yarn, is to make what size, Hannah? Oh, brilliant. So you can make right from zero to 18 months. Um, you, That's just the short sleeve, though. The short sleeve. Yeah. In the pattern, you have got right up until age seven. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So then the next size up, I haven't got on the table, but I'll tell you what you're getting. Short sleeve pink. 18 to 24 months, you get two of the pink mm -hmm. balls which is precious posy colour it's absolutely gorgeous isn't that antique pink it is gorgeous so that's 18 to 24 months you only need the one sorry the two balls of, of yarn which you get in the kit plus your instructions okay next size up are we ready short sleeve three to seven years you get your pattern and again it's just two balls yep Perfect. Two balls a yard in the uh, the vintage, beautiful pink in your precious posy. So that's three to seven years. So anything over 18 months, you need two, two balls, balls of yarn. Yeah. Anything I'm wondering why there are all these different bundles because it's literally just two balls. Exactly. Right, two, I was seven. A, do you know what? I was expecting, <laughs> I was really bracing myself for something really complex yeah, then. Yeah. One ball for under 18, 18 months. months. Over 18 months, two. Two balls. It's as easy as that with a short sleeve. I know. Okay, um, <laughs> we've got the other colourway as well, which is long sleeve option. Now, this is in Blue Mist. That is adorable, isn't it? Lovely. Right, so it's long sleeve. You could make the short sleeve or the long sleeve. You get one ball. <laughs> this is hilarious. Mm. Right, one ball across the broad, whether you want short sleeve, long sleeve, just what colour do you want? Yeah. Under 18 months, is that yeah, right, Stuart? That's absolutely right, yep. And I, I, I think I know where we're going with this. I'm waiting for the graphics before I tell you. Okay, 18 months to 24 months, two balls for the long sleeve blue mist. Thumbs up. Next size, right, I think we probably need three if it's going to be long sleeve. Yeah, this is the difference. So long sleeve in the blue, um, three to seven years. Good size range on these, it's isn't it? It's really good. It's really good. And the thing is as well, it's a good basic, isn't it? I mean, they're adorable, they are. but it's a good basic. I mean, th that little cardigan, you'll pop on, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall uh, for years and years. I like when um, I've got uh, my friend, she's just had twins. So she loves everything matching, but she also got older siblings and they all, she likes everyone to be, all be matching. But I also <laughs> had my favourite garments when I was little and I was absolutely gutted when I outgrew them. So yeah, if you want to then knit larger garments that you loved, uh, you know, for, for them as they were younger. Yeah. These are brilliant. So easy lace design, long sleeve, short sleeve. The different size options are there really clear underneath us on the website. Um, which one are we looking at? Are we going to do a bit of demo yeah, with the lace? I'm going to show you a little bit now to show you that, yeah, little eyelet lace. Again, you get tired of me saying this. It's super easy. Oh, wow. It's super easy. It's super, super approachable. Now, let me show you this. There's an eight row repeat, but most of those rows are just knitting and purling. Look at that. Can you see those little eyelets? It's just called an eyelet stitch. And is it the eyelets in the long sleeve and the short sleeve in all of the, the yeah, you're going to use yeah. this technique? Yeah. Brilliant. It's it, or, or variations on a theme. This is used for the vast majority of knitted sort of eyelet lace. Um, it's just yarn overs, basically, which I will show you how to do. Um, so, for this one, now I'm, I'm obviously this is just a little swatch. This isn't to make anything in particular. Um, but what you're going to do, and to start with what I'm going to do, is just knit and purl 
Okay, so you're going to knit some of the rows. This is nice and easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just knit a With row you. and then purl a row. And this is stocking stitch. What's so lovely about this um, yarn, it's so soft in your hands. It's uh -huh. so comfortable to knit with. It's absolutely lovely. So you'll actually knit and purl four rows. I've already done two of them. That's three. So now I just need to do a purl row. So again, if you're brand new to knitting, so purling, you've got your working yarn at the front this time rather than at the back. Yarn in from the back to the front and then yarn around and through. So we'll just... And this is why I like circulars in particular, because of how I hold my needles and how I knit. But I didn't always knit like this. I used to let go of the needle every time I took a stitch. Right. And I didn't start knitting like this until about four years ago. How long so have you So you can change. For? Since I was three. Oh, really? So oh, more wow. than 25 years. So knitting came before sewing? <laughs> yeah, it did very much. Yeah. The kit... Three to seven year old, there you go, you could have made your own. Yeah, exactly. Well, I did make my own clothes from about, probably about seven, eight, something like that. I was making simple patterns oh, and oh, wow. um, yeah, loved it. So let me show you how to do this eyelet lace then. All right. So uh, let's just make sure I'm in the right part. Okay, right. Yep, so I'm going to knit one. And then I'm going to do what's called a yarn forward. Now, in a pattern, this is abbreviated to Y, F, W, D. Y for yarn and F, W, D for forward. So we're going to do a yarn forward. So what you do there is take the yarn forward over the needle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to slip one knit one and pass the slipped stitch over okay so i'll do that again Thank so you. yarn forward yeah slip one knit one and then pick up that slip stitch with your needle and pass it over the top okay yeah you just keep repeating that. Yarn forward, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. And you just keep doing that now all the way to the end. Slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch, whoops, pass the slip stitch over. Yarn forward, slip, knit, and pass the slip stitch over. So what's easy about this is you're doing the same thing over and over again. So for beginner knitters, or if you're not used to following a pattern, this is very, very good. The good repetition, plan. yeah. Yeah, that repetition is really good because you'll get it. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. Stuart, so talented. You knit, you knit fabulously. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to knit, nearly finished my first baby blanket fab show for Vanessa. Thank you. I think it is, like you said, a lot of people start. Yeah. Um, With something for a baby. Something for a baby. Knitting, quite often something for a baby as well. That's mm. when I first did mine was on my maternity leave. Mm. I was like, right, I can't really do, I can't get anywhere now. I was really into my walking. And Rebecca said, sit and do some knitting. And I did. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, let me just show you on, while these stitches are still on the needle. Can you see now where I did that pass the slip stitch over yeah. you can see the stitch that's passed over and then where I've done that yarn over it looks like a kind of slanty stitch on the needle and can you see that hole in between them right that's your eyelet that's my eyelet okay so that's how they formed as I've knitted them so now on my next row this is so easy all I'm going to do is purl I created lots of eyelets in my blanket without even intending to create eyelets. There were just holes in them. Now, let me just show you. When you come to this, this is the slipped stitch. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, lots of beginner knitters 
are used to seeing yarn wrapped around their needle where it wasn't supposed to be yeah because they've had the yarn at the front or the back and they've accidentally wrapped it round but this is deliberate don't slip that off your needle but what we're going to do what i like to do anyway rather than purling into that i'm actually going to purl into the back of that loop and then hook it over okay so i'm going to these are not normal stitches now Okay, there's a normal stitch. And then look, I've got another. Let me move that pattern out of the way so you can see it better. I've got another yarn over. So I'm going to needle into the back of that and slip it off the needle. Normal purl stitch into the back and purl. And you're just going to work all the way along that row, doing exactly that. Do a normal purl stitch, purl into the back of that one, all the way along. And so as we're doing this now, we're securing all those eyelets. We're getting rid of all of those yarn overs. We're turning them into proper stitches. Right. There's the last one. And purl. And now what we've got is my next row of oh, eyelets nice. all knitted and then all I'm going to do is knit, purl, knit, purl. So I'm going to knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row. So I'm going to do four rows of stocking stitch and then I have got a different row to show you. So we'll need to come back in a little while. Yeah, absolutely. No worries. So can I just remind everybody on the website, all of the, uh, the different sizes are on there. The blue lace one, so same technique that Stuart's talking about, <laughs> this time with the long sleeve option. Remember, this isn't just necessarily for babies. This goes right up to age seven. I mean, look at how beautiful this looks for older children as well, age seven. Um, so the measurements are all on the, uh, on the pattern there. Uh, obviously, with children's sizes, it's so... It's, it's really difficult, isn't it? Zero to seven. I mean, that is such a massive age range. Um, don't forget, for three to seven, you'll get three of your Bambino double knit, beautiful, soft yarn. And that's enough to be able to do the long sleeved ages three to seven, three balls. Whereas all of the other kits, make they all make long sleeved in the blue, but the only thing is, is that you'll obviously be looking at smaller sizes. Pigs as well, um, apart from the older children, you can make the long sleeve in the um, pinks. Yes, yeah, so you could mix and match. So, for example, if you wanted to make the bolero bolero for a five-year-old in blue instead, yeah. you can do that. You'll have some yarn left over, mm -hmm. but you can do that. So the only one way you can't do that is the um, up to 18 months because you need two balls of yarn. Um, if you wanted to make that in the pink, you'd actually need to go for the 18 months plus uh, bundle and then you could make the smaller yeah. long sleeve card. I'd go for the larger one anyway because you're just going to have yarn left over. That's the worst that happened, isn't it? Yeah, you get all the patterns and all the sizes for all of them. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's such gorgeous yarn. You know, you could make things like, um, you know, a little extra, a little hat or scarf, something like that. It'd be oh, adorable. Um, the nice thing as well, that dusky pink shade, mm -hmm. that's in Bellissima, um, which is a identical yarn really other than the fact that it also comes in lots of um, richer deeper colours as well right. so if you wanted to make um, knits for older children mm -hmm. and you wanted perhaps a deeper colour um, then it does come in deeper yarns as well <clears throat> now then can I just show you the other kind of eyelets because that's one way that will create eyelets and then there is also a second way that eyelets are created thank you okay so let me show you that. So this is you're going to start by knitting one or possibly two. It depends on the size you're making. And then you're going to do a yarn forward. We remember how to do that. We're just going to bring the yarn forward around the yarn. That is different, by the way, to a yarn round needle. 
So there's a yarn forward and a yarn round needle. Okay. Yarn forward is when you're kind of in knit mode, okay, because it goes yarn forward. Mm -hmm. If you're doing yarn round needle, you tend to be doing that in a purl mode because yarn round needle goes the other way around so that you then come back ready for purl. So that's how to differentiate between the two. But we're just doing yarn forward. All right. So we've knitted one, yarn forward, and then we're going to knit two together. In your pattern, this is noted as K2TOG. So K knit two tog together. So you're going to get those two stitches now and put them both on the needle. I know I told you earlier on, don't purl these stitches together. But you sometimes you have to. Okay, so we've now knitted those two stitches together. We're going to repeat that sequence. Yarn forward, mm -hmm. knit two together. And if you think about what you're doing here, when you go yarn round needle, you're making an extra, you're putting an extra stitch on the needle. And when you knit two together, you're decreasing by one stitch. Right. So by the time you get to the end of the row, you'll have exactly the same number of stitches. Do you know all the abbreviations that are used in patterns? I yep. was really confused by them. But actually, there is an abbreviation, sort of breakdown, a glossary sort of thing, isn't there? There certainly is. Right at the start of every knitting pattern, um, there's always a breakdown of the abbreviations that have been used. I suppose S it would be a long pattern if they were to write it all out. Every time, long yeah, every hand. Time, yeah. yeah, absolutely right, absolutely right. Now, for some of us, the explanation of the um, technique isn't enough on okay. the pattern, and we might still be confused. And that is where YouTube, Yarn Lane, absolutely. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, really come into their own. And also the StarCraft website, um, because you can look up what is a yarn forward. You can look up what is a, you know, pearl, uh, you know, two together through back loops. You can look that up. You can watch someone knit it um, and then you'll be able to do it. And um, once you've done that row, your next row is just a pearl row again. Mm -hmm. And look, exactly the same as before, your yarn forward looks like this sort of loop round the, the needle, just purl into the back of it and slip it off the needle. And that's creating your secure eyelet. So it's just two different ways. And what happens then in the actual um, bolero is that the eyelets are sort of offset by doing those two different techniques okay we have one final design that we want to introduce as well Stuart yes which is the blue cardigan oh yeah it's so gorgeous love it absolutely lovely we've called it boys it's definitely unisex Maisie would absolutely wear this yeah. it's so lovely isn't it I just it's how squishy it is what is it that makes gorgeous. it so soft well there's two things the yarn is at the heart of that because it is squishy gorgeous it's it's got a high twist a merino twist to the yarn right. which also gives it fantastic stitch definition and squish but also garter stitch is a squishy knitting stitch right so Lovely. that created i know it's adorable isn't it uh, so this is birth to three years again the graphics that you can see are in for newborn you get one ball of yarn and this is to create this gorgeous hooded cardigan uh, it's got really lovely detail with the ribbed uh, hem and cuffs only 9.99 and what a beautiful beautiful cardigan that is only 9.99 slight is it a slightly lighter color yes slightly lighter color than the example but still this bambino yeah. beautiful blue which is called what color have they called this one i'm always intrigued to see vintage blue vintage blue it's gorgeous isn't it <clears throat> almost like a chambray blue yes it is we also have it in this lovely um blue mist as well which we saw earlier on uh this is lovely as well and again unisex if you want to make it for a little boy little girl this is again the newborn blue mist i believe there's another option here Stuart. can you do it without the hood 
You certainly can. You certainly can. Yeah. What's great, there's a little collar on that one. What's lovely about Stylecraft patterns is there's usually, almost always, I think, a second option, even a third or a fourth option on patterns. So there's loads of great value. They're patterns you'll go back to and knit again and again. Yeah. You know, it's why they're, you know, the most loved premium acrylic brand in Britain. Yeah. And, you know, a, a, a yarn company that many of us as knitters go to again and again and again mm -hmm. absolutely right sorry just to clarify <coughs> this is for the newborn one ball um that's vintage blue vintage blue is that light blue also comes in different sizes the next size up zero to 24 months is two balls Zero to 24 months, you two balls, and that's for the hooded option as well. You do get the pattern with all of these bundles to create either the hooded option or the sort of collar option. And then finally, one to three years, same pattern, three balls of yarn this time. So you will get three. And this is this colorway, which is vintage blue. It's slightly lighter than the, um, the, the option. Now we do have the other color option which this time is your blue mist. It also comes in three sizes. Newborn, one ball of yarn and your pattern, £9.99. 18 to 24 months. So when it says, um, oh sorry, no, this is 0 to 12 months, which is, um, which is two balls of yarn, £15.50. From my experience, I'd go for one of the larger ones. I would definitely go for one yeah, of the larger ones. Yeah. Just because I think this is something that, I think that's what most people are doing. And if you're unsure of what to make for somebody who's having a baby, if you're making this, go for a bigger option. Just because I think that this is something that a baby would wear after being three to six months. And you do also get a lot of newborn clothes when you when you first have a baby. It's nice to have things that will fit them a bit later down the line. So, uh, and also think about what month it is that they're born. So this would be perfect, obviously, for then the, as it starts to get a bit colder. Oh, equally, actually, this is a lovely one for for summer. Be nice as if it's cold in the in the summer. Uh, Sixteen ninety nine, and that's for three balls of yarn ages one to three and this is in the darker <coughs> misty blue if you are looking at one to three in either of them i'd be quick just because they are very very popular i think value for money as well well it's 10 pound for one ball 15 pound for two or 16.99 for three 16.99 brilliant value yeah it's fantastic isn't it absolutely fantastic right we've still got five minutes uh what techniques are we going to be looking at with this one Stuart? i haven't on that one no, i'm going to tell you to. the reason why i Go haven't on. is because it is garter stitch which is Ooh. so so straightforward and easy and we did this we, we did have a look at it actually with the um with we the, did the with edge the of the blanket edging on there it's super easy um I'm just, do you mind just passing over the cardigan to me? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. It's far apart. Yeah, it's super easy and it's a raglan sleeve. So <coughs> all you're going to do when you're knitting this, if I just unbutton, um, is when you knit this, you're going to knit your front, which will start off. Okay, how adorable are these, oh, by the way? So these cute. little, some of the little features on this are so adorable. Oh, I love that. Just to tuck it in a little bit. Um, a little bit of rib. Now, this is just knit two, purl two rib. If you've never done that before, you're going to knit two stitches, purl two, knit two, purl two on your right side. And then when you come back on the opposite side of the row, on the other wrong side row, you're going to purl into the knit stitches and knit into the knit stitch. So you just do the opposite. Oh, I'm with yeah. you, yeah. And that's your ribbing, and that creates this sort of springy edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it'll sort of hug the hips or the wrist. And then you're going to change to garter stitch, and garter stitch looks the same on both sides, literally knitting every single row. Now, when you get to the armhole, you'll start to decrease along here so that the knitting will taper in 
um, and decreases can be as easy as knitting two stitches together, right, which okay. you've also We've seen done. me yeah. do this morning. Um, super, super easy. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much. What is it that you're knitting there? Is this your next scarf? No, this no. is a little bit of the zigzag blanket. Oh, OK. And that is literally as simple. That is um, yarn forward slip stitch pass slip stitch over knit two together that's all you need to be able to do and we've covered all of those techniques this morning as well brilliant all the blankets are now under us on the website and they have fewer than half in stock it's been a very very busy hour and i know a lot of people tend to watch the show get the techniques and then check out at one o'clock just be quick. We love seeing Stuart and all his techniques. We've had loads of messages for you across the Oh, board. that's lovely. Good, good. Well, the thing is, I think, you know, um, often it's just the odd abbreviation mm -hmm. that can put us off yeah. tackling the pattern. And, you know, usually the instructions will set out what to do. But if you're ever in any doubt, YouTube it, go on the Starcraft yeah. website. There are loads of videos there. Oh, great. Um, to t techniques. And then, same as I always say you don't you'll 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 consolidate when you knit the garment but practice it on a little swatch yeah if you want to practice doing that little eyelet lace stitch yeah cast on with any double knit yarn do do four or eight rows i mean one top tip is at the start of every single knitting pattern knitters you know what i'm going to say at the start of every knitting pattern it tells you what the tension yeah, make should be tension and make square. a tension square and um we never do it do we some of you are saying i do and i'm proud of you <laughs> most of us don't but it is really worthwhile doing and then you make sure that your garment comes out the right size if your tension's different to the tension it's supposed to be it's bigger or smaller all you've got to do, Vix, this is as simple as it is to get the garment the right size, is use Thank needles you. that are a size down or a size up. That's all you've got to do. Right. And Arnie and Carlos, mm -hmm. who were mega stars in the knitting world, I remember them saying to me once at a show, there's that name drop, um, saying to me at a <laughs> show, we show. both knit really tight, so we always have to do a needle size higher whatever we knit and that's only cost so there's no shame no, in having to your alter style. your tension yeah you can't start knitting looser or tighter than you've been knitting for the last 50 years no. just change your needles simple brilliant thank you as always amazing tips um all of the different colors you can see there are going through the graphics so have a look on the website it's been an absolute pleasure do you know what you're gonna have to do with john scott tomorrow on sewing name those babies <laughs> oh, did we never find out who no, they were? No, we didn't. Oh, I, they're probably in that sort of Facebook. I can maybe. tell you that none of them are me because there's only one photograph of me oh. as a baby. And if I was to show it you, you'd swear that I was a time traveller <laughs> and I'd been born in 1901 because the picture looks like it was taken in the Victorian era. Oh, uh, so similar to John Scott's <laughs> baby photos then. <laughs> really? <laughs> but his were photographed in the Victorian era. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all ever so much. Yarn Lane is back on Wednesday the 2nd. Stuart, when are you back on? I'm back next week on the 1st of February. Fab. And it heralds the start of my birthday month. Oh, yeah! It's my birthday on, when, on the 3rd. Brilliant. So, can't yeah. wait, can't wait. Thank you ever so much for today. It's Pleasure. been lovely. Thank you. Um, don't go there because we're about to hand over to the jewellery maker. I'm back in a few days. I'm not sure when. I'm still in holiday mode. I can't remember what I'm doing. But I'll see you very soon. John Scott will be back with you bright and early tomorrow morning from 8 o'clock. He'll see you then. Bye.